Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed one six scale figure unboxing and review. Now today we are taking a look at Toy Zero's Sky Scavenger aka the Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. Now this isn't the first Vulture we've reviewed on the channel and it's certainly not going to be the last either. I got mine though from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below for your reference purposes only. Don't forget this is an unlicensed unofficial figure made by Toys Era. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal Spidey collection. As for the box art, as soon as I took this out of the shipper, I immediately thought to myself, no, there's no possible way there's a full 1-6 scale vulture in here complete with wings, this box is so thin. But spoiler alert, there is, don't worry I checked. Up top, Toy Zero. Down below, Sky Scavenger in metallic gold. Then front and center, a silhouetted glossy green image of Vulture's helmet. On the side of the box, a green print of Vulture's wing. Get it? Because it's green? I'm so sorry. On the back of the box, another green print, plus some warnings and legal info. Now, the way they were able to get this box so thin is they were just really clever with their use of stacking. We have both wings off to one side, plus the display base. It's all sandwiched on top of each other. Very, very clever. As for the figure himself, though, first in-hand impressions are pretty positive. This guy feels nice and weighty. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box, take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, quite surprisingly it's pretty simple. Down below it's a regular rectangular style Toy Zero base. Up top, some speckling on the surface and a rough texture, nice and grippy. Around the front, Nothing, which is totally better than printing Sky Scavenger. Thank you, Toy Zero. Then up top, you have this kind of T bracket of articulated flight pole arms, and on either end, a translucent bracket for the wings to slide into. Speaking of which, here we have one, and this thing is huge. Now, initially, I praised Toy Zero. When they announced their vulture, it had the smallest wingspan of the bunch. I said, look, if you want one with the glorious wingspan, get the Jazz Inc. It can be your centerpiece. But if you don't have the space, go for Toy Zero, it's the most compact, it could be the one for you. But not to be outdone by anyone else, Toy Zero said, no, we're not going to stand for that, we're going to upgrade our wings, and that's what they did, they are now massive. Now they are made of this relatively lightweight plastic, they do have multiple joints and hinges, one at the base, in the midsection, and you can rotate the rotor. The rotor also spins in the middle, but that's not all. There's a switch on the back, and oh yes, when you turn it on, there are some LEDs. Now, I had some trouble getting these to work. For some reason, you have to put the batteries in backwards, and then it started to function. Fingers crossed with your unit, you don't have to go through as much hassle as I did. Now, the sculpt is relatively sharp. I like the detail. It's well painted with multiple colors. Gunmetal and brighter silver, some gold and green. Then, on the surface, a bunch of weathering and dirt and grime. Don't worry, we will, of course, be popping these wings on Vulture later on. In order to assemble everything, you do need this piece. It's a little backpack. It slots into the apparatus on his back, and I will show you, don't worry. You have these kind of articulated rubbery arms up top that plug into the wings. Then they do slot in on either side. It's painted in the same way as the wings, meaning it's filthy. There's soiling of oil stains and dirt in the crevices, plus on the gold sections, just a little bit of speckling and chipping. 
It's definitely not their best paint job, but it's not their worst either. His gun is painted in the same way as the wings and the backpack, so it all matches quite well. Around the back, you do have the Chitauri crystal. You can rotate this piece forward and back, and yes, there are some LEDs. You flick the switch, and up front, a really bright purple LED. Now, is this something I will have powered up in the collection? No, probably not. I would have rathered a blast effect that could plug onto the barrel, but if you like LEDs, oh, this figure's got a bunch of them. Would you look at that, what a segue, more LEDs in the helmet. Now the helmet is removable from the neck piece, it's actually on a separate articulated neck compared to the head sculpt that isn't, it's a fixed neck. This is also painted well. The sculpt is sharp, it looks accurate to the movie. The visor is translucent, and you can see those super bright LEDs poking through. I would have loved a swap out visor with painted green eyes just underneath, but I guess if I wanted to, I could do that myself. You do have this articulated robbery hose that kind of goes nowhere, but you'll see how that all works when we get the figure out here. And when we do bring him out here, we can try out this Michael Keaton head sculpt. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is actually a Hot Toys level sculpt. Now, I'm not saying that as hyperbole, saying Toys Era have done such a good job. No, no. I mean, the digital sculpt that this is based off was done by Yixi. Yixi on Insta actually did the sculpt for Hot Toys Cobb Vanth and this head sculpt for Toys Era. So the underlying digital sculpt is Hot Toys quality. The paint applications, maybe not so much. The skin texture is well done. I think the likeness to Michael Keaton is there with the wrinkling and the furrowed brow. I honestly cannot wait to try this out on the figure. But before we do, he also comes with a full array of hands. Unlike the Jazz Ink one where I only got one set of hands, this one gives you the whole gamut. They are nicely sculpted with some leather-like texture on the surface, but they're not really all that well painted. They're just black unpainted plastic. You do also get these flight stabilizers, I think. They're these rubbery plastic pieces, and the same thing can be said with these. They're painted just okay. What we are going to do now, though, is get Vulture himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or wings or anything like that. So far, so good. I can already tell you, I'm pretty happy. Toys Era have quite clearly focused on the figure before focusing on the wings, and maybe that's worked for them. We'll have to discuss that in a lot more detail in just a second. The proportions are great. It looks like an older dude in a flight jacket and some green cargo pants. It's not too big and bulky. Nothing stands out as ill-fitting or not supposed to be there. It all blends really well, and it looks accurate to the movie to boot. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the helmet first. Now, don't worry, I want to see the Michael Keaton head sculpt on this body just as badly as you do. It's coming up in just a second. But for now, the helmet, it looks dope. It fits in proportion to the body, at least I think so. Some people have said it's a little bit too big, but... Don't forget, an actual head is supposed to be inside the helmet, so it needs to be a little bit larger. I love the piercing green eyes, but we've already discussed that. It does have that rubbery hose that is articulated, and you can tuck it into the collar. It's kind of up to you where you want it to go. Now, speaking of the collar, it does ride a little bit high. It almost makes it look like he has no neck, but he definitely does. It's just tucked up underneath. Now, technically, if you wanted to, you could unzip the jacket and futz with it, but I kind of like it riding a little bit higher. It has that old-school aviator jacket look. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they were going for. You see, the MCU costume designers, they're very clever. They take real-world stuff that we're familiar with, such as an aviator-style pilot jacket, then add the harness and tech bits and pieces over the top, and there you go, a live-action vulture. 
It's the perfect blend between retro and modern, and it totally gets the job done, at least in my opinion. Now, speaking of getting the job done, I love this head sculpt. It's Michael Keaton. It sits a little bit higher as compared to the helmet, so you can see more of the neck, and it's still in proportion to the body. Which head sculpt do I prefer, helmet or the unmasked one? I'm not sure yet. Maybe you can help me out. Let me know which one you prefer down below. Around the back, granted he's currently not wearing his wings, but there's still a lot to look at here. We've got pistons and tech details, and it's all painted well. It's done in a base coat of silver and gold for certain sections, plus some gunmetal. There's dirt and grime over the top, plus some dry brushing. It looks fairly worn. Now, unfortunately, without the wings on, there's a big ugly peg hole. Now, that means when you plug them in, it is going to be nice and secure with these big tabs, but when you don't have them on, it's always visible. At the very least, it's around the back, so if you have him displayed front on, you shouldn't really see it. I don't mean to assume, but I'm fairly certain everyone, including me, we're going to display him front on. Now, speaking of front on, he is wearing his jacket, and unfortunately, no, I don't think it's leather. I did do the smell test, and oh, it smells of something, but it doesn't smell of natural hide. It kind of has this chemical pleather smell, so I'm going to go with pleather. Will this stand the test of time? I'm not sure, but fingers crossed it does. He does have multiple straps and buckles, and yes, they are real straps, so they can move around when it comes to posing. Up top, we have discussed the fur collar, but it's worth noting it's not super clean. It's got some dirt and grime running through it, so it looks just a little bit more natural. He also has various armature pieces on his arm, Will they affect articulation? We'll find out a little bit later. I'm fairly certain that it's safe to say this is Toy Zero's most ambitious figure ever, just based off the legs alone. There are so many moving parts and pieces, it's all well sculpted, it's all well painted, and... Like I said, they're moving. You have to be able to articulate him. It's not a static figure by any means. His pants are green fabric. There's some dirt and grime on the surface as well. Nicely weathered. His knee pads do move along with his knees when you bend his legs and... That can't have been easy to do. You've got all this tech detail along the sides of his legs, then some shin armor. Plus, it's a split-cut boot design. Even with as much stuff going on as there is, you still have range of motion for the ankle. Then you have these big honking claws, and they're fully articulated up and down. You can stow them away or bring them down to grab onto Spidey, and they're nowhere near as loose as my Jazz Ink one. Then again, that was an early sample where I'm pretty sure this one is a final product, so fingers crossed with the later versions of Jazz Ink, these were tightened up just a little. Then on the underside, some fully sculpted tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, it quite clearly was a tale of two vultures. The one on the left, made by Toy Zero. The one on the right, made by Jazz Inc. Which one was superior? Which one was inferior? I don't know, but I think they exist for different reasons. There is a reason to pick up either one. On the left, with Toy Zero, they put the figure first. They opted for a better body with better proportions, more articulation, slightly more believable as an older Michael Keaton. I like the fit of the outfit better. I also like the LEDs, the swap out head sculpt, and the extra accessories, but then again, the Jazz Ink one, it has more presence. It's on a bigger body, the wingspan is huge, so if you're looking for a centerpiece, maybe Jazz Ink is the one for you. If you're just looking for a vulture figure and it stops there, Maybe it's Toy Zero. It really is up to you. It's a toss-up between the two vultures. I'm struggling to pick my favorite, but purely based on a figure perspective, my eye is kind of drawn to Toy Zero, especially with that lighter collar. Now, in comparison to the Hot Toys tech suit Spidey, he's taller. So, even though he's shorter than Jazz Inc's vulture, he's not too short. He's still quite clearly an adult versus the 
young adolescent of Peter Parker. All right, now's the time, the moment we've all been waiting for, the wing assembly, and it's really easy. The first thing you want to do is slide it into the backpack, then plug this piece in up on top. Now, when you push it in, it kind of stops halfway, but push it down even further and it clicks in position. Also, when you're installing the wings, make sure the battery compartment is facing towards the back. Because of course, when you're looking at Vulture, you're probably going to be looking at him front on and you don't want to be seeing that battery compartment, it's kind of ugly. The same thing can be said for the wing on the other side, you plug this piece in and push it in all the way. And lastly, to attach the wings to Vulture, super easy as well, there are just these clip pieces that kind of slot into this back piece, but do bear in mind when you push this in, it's a really sturdy connection. It won't be super easy to remove if you want to later. Now that I'm seeing him with the wings on, the one thing that comes to mind is, whoa, this guy is an absolute monster. I've already said that maybe the Jazz Ink one has the superior presence factor, but... Now that I'm seeing this guy wings fully installed, all the LEDs turned on, I'm not sure, I'm starting to like this guy better. The proportions of the body, I think, just look more realistic. Plus, his display base isn't as cumbersome. It's smaller, it's more compact, yet still quite sturdy. If you're wondering, ooh, can he stand without the display base? No. I did try, he toppled over, make sure you use the display base. Going over articulation, without the wings on, yes, I decided, let's just leave them off for this segment. Can you imagine if they were on, they'd be flapping around in the background as we're moving the joints, causing all kinds of chaos. Yeah, no thank you. Also bear in mind, this is my personal copy, so I'm going to be just a touch more careful. Starting off with the helmet, it's on a double ball peg and an articulated neck. Looking up the full way, great for flight poses. Looking forward, swivel and pivot side to side. Now, even though he has this armature on, it's been pretty cleverly engineered for maximum range of motion. The arms will go up on soft ratchets to there, going forward and back, also on ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down, swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow getting you just past 90, then of course a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso crunches forward and back, swivels and pivots, the legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh. You do have a ratcheted double bend at the knee, but I personally, I'm not going to push it past 90. Then down here for the ankle, it's a double ball peg, but due to how this piece is designed, you kind of only get forward and back. Wrapping up on Toy Zero's Sky Scavenger, aka The Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. Going into this, really excited. I'm a Toy Zero fan, but... I also knew that crazy complex engineering like this guy has, it's not really up their alley, that's more Jazz Inc's thing. But in saying that, I've kind of evolved my thoughts throughout the course of this video. At the start, I would have said, Jazz Inc, hands down, better presence, it's the way to go. But now that we're at the end of the video and I've put this guy through his paces and I've experienced the engineering and the LED light up features and the swap out head sculpt and the figure itself, you can probably already tell this Toy Zero figure I think is the winner. I love my Jazz Ink one, don't get me wrong, but from a pure value perspective, the amount of stuff that you get here and the light up features, I reckon Toy Zero might just be the way to go. Now we do have one more third party Vulture review coming up on the channel, so definitely stay tuned. Now this guy isn't perfect, my one big complaint is actually the display base. For some reason the flight pole is really small, so if you want to have him any higher up, you're going to have to fashion one yourself or maybe steal one from a Hot Toys Iron Man figure that's a little bit longer. Now I got my vulture from ToysWonderland.com. Do bear in mind, like I said at the start, this is an unofficial, unlicensed product made by Toys Era. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal Spidey collection. While you are down in the description, 
why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.